Uh, no, it, it, it's going to be a, a good meeting. I like coming here and teaching here at the Senior Center. Um, well, because you guys are really good audiences. You really seem to take in the information that I give you. So um, I really do enjoy it. And what they wanted me to talk about today was a healthy holiday eating. Uh, my name is Carla. I know a lot of you. A lot of you have listened to me before. Uh, I work at the um, University of Wyoming Extension Office over there by the fairgrounds, and I teach a lot of classes um, on nutrition and cooking, um, healthy cooking, and saving money at the grocery store, nutrition, you have it. I teach a lot of different classes, and I really do enjoy doing that. I always talk about food, and I usually bring food whenever I come and talk, and so I do have these muffins here. If you guys wanted to take one on your way out, whatever you want to do. Um, these are apple walnut muffins, and um, I don't usually use sugar anymore in my baking. I use either honey or maple syrup, uh, pure maple syrup, and that's what's in these muffins if you wanted to sample them. And there's also recipes if you like them enough to want to make them. Uh, but I am going to talk today about, about the holidays because Saturday is November 1st. And <coughs> what happens during the holidays more than any other time of the year? Eating. Eating. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of eating. Right? We all do a lot of eating. And it used to be that maybe Thanksgiving and Christmas were mainly the holidays that we overconsumed or ate a lot of sweets. But it seems now every time there's a holiday. I mean, it might be Easter, it might be the 4th of July, it might be Memorial Day, the 4th of, or uh, uh, Labor Day. We eat a lot at every holiday, but especially in the winter months. And so this is just kind of giving you guys some ideas on, on how to just back it up just a little bit and some tips on how not to, to overconsume because you know come January 1st, what happens then? You want to lose the weight that you put on during the holidays, at least a lot of people do, or they want to get healthier or change their ways. I mean, I'm sure not one person in here has not said that to themselves at January 1st. <coughs> this year's going to be different. I mean, healthy this year. But there's so many good ways to do it and so many simple ways to do it. Just kind of breaking out of your normal routine and the, the way that you would normally eat or the, the way that you would normally cook. Um, and so I, I just have some, I have this, this little simple handout, but these are some of the things that I wanted to, to go over. And one of them is use smaller plates. Have you heard that before? Do you use smaller plates? Do you do that? Or have you tried that? Yes. Does it work? Yes. I, I really do believe that, but I think too that it's hard to find a, a, a smaller plate. And this is, I think this is probably maybe an eight or nine inch plate, um, which is, is a little bit smaller than the plates that we see mostly nowadays is a much bigger plate that you see out there. And so what happens between the big plate and the little plate, if I put the exact same food, and of course these are food models, not actual food. So this is the smaller plate and then this is the big plate. And so you can see it really, there really is a difference between the two. What are you going to do if you use a bigger size plate like this? You're going to load it up, right? You're going to put more on it because we eat with our eyes, don't we? We really do, especially as, as Americans because I could ask you this too, how do you know when you're full? Usually it's when the food's up. I must be done. How do you know when you're done eating or how do you know when you're full? And Americans typically do clean their plates and I think I talked about that a little bit last time but this really shows a good visual where you do want to use a smaller plate because you really are going to serve yourself less. And you want to purposely serve yourself less because you'll eat it and you'll feel full. It's amazing how our brain will register that when we're full when the food is gone. But we really have to think about am I full or not? And, and a lot of you might even have that feeling of fullness. Or maybe some of you do feel that feeling of fullness, but it's at the point where you're over full. So it's always a good idea to start with smaller portions. And if you're still hungry, then get more. But start, start with a smaller plate and a smaller portion and try to slow down. Do any of you feel like you might eat a little bit, a little bit too fast? When the food's good, especially, yeah, it's hard not to. If you've been in the habit your entire life of eating fast, it's extremely difficult to slow down. One, one thing I tell people to do, and I try to do uh, when I remember, is, is to eat with my non-dominant hand, which is my left hand. So I'll eat with my left hand, and that really does force me, especially something like rice, or maybe use chopsticks, right? Wouldn't that slow you down? But do something different in order to eat a little bit slower, because it is true that it takes the brain about 20 minutes for that feeling to register, that feeling of fullness, to get that signal to hit our stomach, and we're not hungry anymore. But typically, we will eat a lot, eat it fast, and then by the time we're full or we feel that feeling, 
we're over full, especially mm -hmm. like during Thanksgiving when we, we really do tend to, to, to load up on the bigger plates. And there's nothing wrong with that, but when we do it day after day, then it really tends to catch up with us, if that's ever happened to you. So that would be my one recommendation, is use smaller plates, smaller bowls, smaller cups. Really, it's a smaller everything. You can find them at the store. I find a hard time finding a smaller bowl. Most of the bowls are very, very round, big, around, and very deep. <laughs> You have a dish of ice cream. <laughs> it's, yeah, it looks lost in that in big bowl. So that that would be my first uh, recommendation. And it says use the appetizer plate, but that's what they're saying is use a smaller plate for uh, for things like that. Uh, also, uh, another one that I'm just going to kind of kind of skip ahead here is planning ahead. And I talked about this when I talked two weeks ago about snacks and planning ahead so that you aren't tempted to eat things that you wouldn't normally eat. Um, like uh, something like a, a healthy snack, a healthy muffin, or some type of a, a fruit dish, or a yogurt parfait, or whatever it might be, plan ahead so you're not over hungry when it comes time to actually eat that meal. Um, plan ahead for your meals too. You guys plan ahead during the holidays to know what you're going to be fixing right for that certain meal. Make sure you're doing it not just on Thanksgiving or not just on Christmas, but also other meals too. We want to plan that ahead or else we're not going to get right the right food we're not going to be eating the proper nutrients if we're not planning that ahead uh, what about what about kind of going away from food for a minute talking about physical activity you guys are active on holidays <laughs> some of you yeah uh -huh. probably all all during the year it's harder here in wyoming in the winter especially here in casper to, to get physical activity like we do in the spring summer and fall because of the weather because of the wind now it's fine if the wind is at your back, but then at some point you have to turn around <laughs> and walk against the wind. And it can be very, um, not, not a fun experience if you're out there walking and it's very cold and windy. And we don't tend to get enough exercise during the holidays. Extremely important. Do any of you go indoors, like maybe to a shopping mall and do some walking? I go to the rec center. <coughs> to the rec center? Mm -hmm. Okay, and you walk around the gym? or No, we, I take aerobics. Oh, you take a class at the okay. Class. Okay, very good idea. There are a lot of indoor options as far as physical activity through the winter time. Um, I've seen people doing the mall walking um, at both um, the Sunrise and then um, 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 the other mall down on Second Street. I've also uh, rec center. There's swimming and there's uh, classes and there's things going on. I guess pickleball is a very fun. Um, activity that a lot of people do so don't forget about being active because it's just as important it's even more important during the holidays because we take in more calories than, than we normally do um, how about things like subst substituting in recipes do you cook a lot bake no what kind of substitutions are you do you guys make I'm just just kind of curious to see <laughs> you don't well, I bake, but I don't substitute it. <laughs> I use the real deals. <laughs> Not only can you eat here. Here? Here. I'm still roasting those vegetables. Yes, yeah, so roasting vegetables. <laughs> um, and, and I always hear both sides, and I always like to hear what people think about that. And I'm talking about substituting, for one, like salt. Okay, so that's one of the recommendations that are out there. Um, something we get too much of and something they recommend that we cut down at any time of the year. Sugar is another one that they think we get too much of and we should cut down, especially during the holidays, right? Because there's extra sugar. What's the third thing that, that uh, is known that we get too much of that's not the healthiest thing? Fat. 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 Oh. Fat. Fat. Mm -hmm. A certain type of fat, right? What type is it? Trans fat. Mm -hmm. Now, trans fat is one of them. Now, trans fat, that's a man made fat. And they really have, it seems like they have taken it out of our food supply because uh, the USDA is now saying that it's not recognized as safe. And so we don't see that as much in our food supply. Saturated, Saturated. fats mm -hmm. are the fats that we really do want to avoid. They really have no business um, in our diet in large amounts. And those typically come from animal products. You're also going to see them in dairy products. And so when you, when you were kind of laughing at it, the first thing I always think of in holiday day, he said sugar is, um, is whipping cream. And whipping cream, obviously, it does add a lot to the taste of whatever you're making because it has lots of fat in it. Whenever there's lots of fat, it tastes really, really good. But I don't think you guys would, would disagree with me that we do tend to get too much of it in the, what I call, you know, the American diet, right? And so that's another thing that we, that we want to try to substitute. Basically, are those three, are those three things. 
Now salt, getting back to salt. What, what is a way that we could substitute for salt if, it call, is it, if it's called for in a recipe? Can we substitute? Can we cut down on the amount of salt or will it affect the recipe? Yeah, we typically can. We typically can, you know, it calls for a teaspoon of salt. In a lot of products, baking products, it may affect um, the final product, just like sugar. Sugar's there for a reason. Salt is there for a reason. But there's also a lot of recipes where you can cut it down and completely cut it out. We don't need to salt our water when we're boiling it necessarily. We don't need to use a salt shaker after the, the food has already been prepared. We can substitute things like Mrs. Dash is one that's very popular. And there's also some herbs, regular herbs, like we have basil, we have Italian seasoning, we have um, uh, thyme. I mean, there, there's just tons of different herbs and seasonings that we can use in our food. They, always, they have a, a spice that's no salt and it's just spices, other spices in it. I use that. And it's called no salt? Mm -hmm. Is that the name of it? Okay. And I use the seasonal, which has seasonal. very little salt mm -hmm. right. and other spices. So to me, that's cutting back. I don't use regular salt a lot. Mm -mm. No, or garlic salt or onion salt. Using the powder form mm -hmm. instead of the salt form is, is also um, a good idea to do that. Because over the course of a day, when you're cutting it out little bits at each meal or in each cooking that you're doing, it really does make a difference when you think about day after day after day because we really do have to be concerned with sodium. Any processed food is going to be high in sodium. Canned soups are high in sodium. A lot of the food we buy at the grocery store is high in sodium. So when we're cooking at home, that's where we can control the recipe, change things up just a little bit. We don't have to have salt in it. You can try just cutting it down, cutting it out, and substituting something else for that salt. But what about sugar? That's I get a lot of resistance <laughs> in that in that area about cutting out sugar, especially during the holidays. You know? I think it, you can use I when I make a fruit pie, I use more Splenda and just a little bit of sugar, and I don't think it affects the taste at all. I don't think it does either because I've done that, and I think uh -huh. it, some of that takes some experimenting. Mm -hmm. um, Another, one of the diseases that is on the rise in our country uh, because of our overconsumption is diabetes. And so that is something that we need to think about is these are some things that I should probably try to substitute something else because of the amount, the amount of sugar, because of the way that it raises the blood sugar. There's a lot of ingredients that we can substitute in a recipe um, you know, and I'll just use this as an example where there's no sugar that's going to, because of all the other ingredients in there, it's got, it's got wheat, white whole wheat flour and then it has fruit and it has nuts and it has um, um, the pure maple syrup. So it doesn't raise the blood sugars like if we just had, let's say, a straight sugar cookie, which really raises the blood sugar high. I'm sure a lot of you probably are aware of that. And then it will come back down. But we just want to keep them level. We don't want it spiking because it really is not good for us. So substituting honey or um, Splenda, uh, I use some, some pure maple syrup. Now there's pure maple syrup, and then there's maple syrup, like Aunt Jemima, Mrs. Butterworths, or a lot of those products that are on the grocery store shelves. I'm a big label reader, and I read a lot of ingredients. Um, I look at the ingredient list, and basically maple syrup is gonna be sugar. You look at the first ingredient, second ingredient, high fructose corn syrup. So the pure maple syrup is actually a lot less sweet than the maple syrup that you would find, um, uh, like Mrs. Butterworth. I'm just throwing out some names there because that's the only one I can think of. So using something like, like that or honey in your recipe instead, and you can use that basically in a one-to-one -one ratio. You can actually use a little bit less honey than you would sugar because it's a little bit sweeter. And then honey is, is just natural. It's just a natural product. Honey is honey. Uh, we just like to use it in a lot of our in a lot of our recipes. Again, we want to think about keeping the blood sugar at an even level. What about applesauce? Applesauce. Applesauce is something that, that we tend to use, and, I'm, and, and that goes in the next uh, um, category, which is the fat. Substituting applesauce for oil. Now, in a lot of our recipes, we will do like half and half. So let's say if it called for a half a cup of oil, then we would do a quarter cup of oil and then a quarter cup of, of applesauce. You can also, and I don't know if any of you guys have done this before, experimented with it, yogurt is also a good one to use in a recipe and it substitutes really nicely for, for the fat in a recipe. Back in the day, if you look at really old recipes, Home for shortening. Lard was used all the time in, in, in recipes, right? And it was a good product. I remember, I remember my mom did a lot of baking with, with that type of stuff. But we don't do that anymore because we know so much more about the health. Um, yeah, so I'm going, I'll go ahead. 
don't want to help a lot of people out here. Thank you. That's better. Yeah. It's distracting for me, for me just a little bit. Um, but the recipes have changed over the years just because we know now that, that the saturated fat in the diet or the saturated fat that was in the shortening can cause some health problems. And I believe you guys are probably pretty aware of that, but can any of you tell me one of the problems that we're facing with saturated fat and the high levels of saturated fat in the diet? Okay, Lung so in the arteries, maybe? Yeah, and that, that, that is it. So if something's high in cholesterol or it's high in saturated fat, basically in the animal product or a dairy product, what it does is it converts in the body to, to the saturated fat and it tends, to, it tends to cling to the artery wall, especially if there's any kind of an inflammation, which over time, you know, we get inflammation on the inside of our artery wall, and so, so particles do tend to build up on the inside of the wall. And over time, it starts to become a lot more narrow because of those fats and the cholesterol that, uh, that turn into the saturated fat. Yeah, it can be a problem with the arteries. So whether I'm talking to people in their 90s or if I'm talking to teenagers, I'm always talking about, about saturated fat and the effect that it has on our arteries because even a child of 15 years old, they're finding high cholesterol. They test their blood, they find they have, they have high cholesterol. Now that's not worrisome. I don't know what is. We, this is the first time in history that we see our teens are having health problems that before we're never seeing you know, until 40, 50 years old. So that's pretty crazy. Type 2 diabetes, high cholesterol. And then the other thing, um, just as a side note, kind of going back to the sugar, is that the amount of high fructose corn syrup, um, which has taken the place of sugar because it's cheaper and it's sweeter, but the body processes it differently than it does something like sucrose, which is table sugar, and it has to go through the liver. And so that is another problem that they're seeing with some of these teenagers is that their liver has fat on it. And they have fatty liver disease. And these are kids, these are teenagers, because the body is working so hard to process that fructose through their diet and the liver is working so hard that they're starting to see a little bit of wear and tear on youngsters. And one of the, the top reasons is, is the pot consumption. It's because they drink so much pot and it really does start to take its toll. Um, so any age, if we're talking about any age, it really does become a concern because we don't want to get sick for one thing and we also want to have a good quality where we're feeling pretty good. So coming back to the holidays, now I don't want to be a fun killer for the holidays for sure because I, I definitely like my, my share of sweets and, and I do like chocolate. Um, but, but there are ways just to make sure that we are not um, over consuming and also over consuming on the wrong foods. Um, so let, let me just get back to a few more of these tips right here and then I'm going to talk to you guys about these. Um, these little jars that I have made up here. Um, okay, so tiny bites. Tiny, tiny bites. bites. Tiny, tiny bites is like if you are going through maybe, tiny bites. <laughs> if you've heard of tiny bites before, you know how you just pick up a piece of chocolate here or there. You're walking by, you might be, pick up a piece of, of a snack and maybe a piece of turkey and then you have some potatoes and tiny bites throughout the day. So we have to be careful with the tiny bites because I think that sometimes we think, oh, it doesn't count. Right, it's only this big, it's just a bite. But then we have it, and I do that when I get home from work. If there's a uh, pumpkin pie, which is my absolute favorite, uh, just grab a couple bites of a piece of pumpkin pie. You know, when I get home, then I take a couple more bites, and then I take a couple more bites, and yeah, pretty soon you the pie's gone. Because we don't register it's something that we really ever eat. So yeah, those tiny bites add up. And talking about pumpkin pie, which I always talk mm. about pumpkin pie during the holidays, there is a recipe for crustless pumpkin pie. Because pumpkin pie really is actually a fairly healthy dessert because of the pumpkin that's present in it. And the crust is really the part of the pie that isn't good for you. And because of, it's high in saturated fat. That's fun, right? But you can make crustless pie. And a crustless pumpkin pie actually sets up really nicely and is very firm uh, without the crust. So just kind of a side note there as I'm talking about substitutions for some of these holiday foods where you don't necessarily have to get rid of anything. I'm just talking about cutting down and then maybe, yeah, get rid of the crust. Or maybe you don't need both the top and the bottom crust on like an apple pie. Maybe you just want the top part of the crust. You, know, you don't really need all that crust, right? Uh, right just right? leave it on the plate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, well, I've done that before. Well, we get in the habit of eating the same food, you know, again, during the holidays. And I always have liked pumpkin pie, but I never cared much for the crust. So I would put extra Cool Whip 
on, on the pot of crust because I might eat the crust. crust. And then, but then I realized finally that I don't even like the crust. Why am I even eating it? Why do I have to put extra cool whip to it? I mean, so it's crazy, but it was always just what I did. And then I just stopped and thought, well, I really can change this up a little bit. And that's what I'm saying to you guys, of kind of changing up some of the habits that you have, especially um, when we're eating during the holidays. Um, another tip here, make it a habit to eat only when you're sitting, which will limit holiday grazing. Um, that's kind of hard to do. Because we eat a lot when we're standing up. When you're in the kitchen and you're making dinner, or maybe you're just in the kitchen just to do whatever, you tend to eat things when you're standing up. And again, those don't register. We don't think about those as being calories that we've eaten, and then we go in and, and have a whole other a whole meal. So uh, those are just some extra calories that we just need to be aware of. Um, and then also, um, if you're going to go somewhere for dinner, or you're gonna to go to some kind of a holiday party or a get together, you might wanna eat a small snack before you get there because you're, otherwise you're gonna be really hungry. And talk about grazing. If you're at anywhere that's got any kind of a buffet or food sitting out and you do those tiny bites, you already wanna have something in your stomach to make sure that you're not going to overconsume once you get there. And drink water. We drink eggnog, and we drink you know, a lot of other things during the holidays. And I, I absolutely love eggnog, um, but I prefer to make my own just because I can do some substitutions in there. But drink water. In the winter months, we really do tend to forget about the importance of water and making sure that we stay hydrated because usually by the time you feel that thirst, you're beyond dehydrated. And so you want to be drinking even before you feel thirsty. And um, whether you can kind of uh, alert yourself at certain times of the day, oh, drink water. Keep reminding yourself, oh, I need to drink some water. Because that's going to really make a huge difference, too, on the amount of calories that you take in, but also just how you feel. If you don't have enough water and you're feeling, and you're going to get dehydrated pretty quickly, you don't feel very good. In fact, you feel pretty sick once you get to that point. So um, I don't know if that's on the sheet or not, but make sure you are drinking drinking plenty of water. Mm -hmm. Well, I read on the internet there's like a debate in the commu medical community about should you drink water before a meal, during the meal, or after the meal. They say it actually does make a difference. Yeah, um, and there's some mixed research out there too because I've yeah. also heard about um, that there can be dangers of drinking too much water. Um, but I think before a meal, is definitely a good idea and during a meal. I mean, I don't think there's a bad time to drink water. I mean, there really oh. isn't. I mean, because we need to get in water. If you think about the recommendation of 64 ounces, so that's about eight, eight right. ounce eight. glasses. That's quite a bit of water to get in during the day. Mm -hmm. And so I think drinking water before, during, after is not really gonna make a big difference. Well, the, the only thing that I heard a couple of the articles say was if you drink water during your meal, it dilutes the acid in your stomach, so you, whatever, process the food slower. And, and you don't want that. You just want the acids to be strong and eat up your food. I, does that make any sense, or is that off? No, I don't think that anything could dilute the acid in our stomach. I mean, that's, oh, that's pretty strong, matter. and the water goes through pretty quick. But I'm also not a doctor, so, yeah. so I'm a dietitian, but, but I haven't heard that. Um, unless it's massive quantities, I really don't think it's going to make a, a big difference. But it, it is a good idea uh, to be drinking water just to get the, the, the food flowing through. I mean, it helps with the digestion to be drinking water. I, mean, I don't know what, what you guys drink. Um, Would you uh, comment on lemon with water? Oh, I love that. Yes. I love that. Okay. And I'm glad you asked that. And, I, and I've done it in some of the classes that I've taught is I like to bring water, a pitcher of water. Um, but water can be very boring. The flavor, a lot of people just don't like to drink it because it's just a boring beverage. But if you put lemon in it, and what we like to do is put lemon, lime, and le lemon, lime, and orange. So it's a citrus drink. Um, sometimes we put cucumber and lemon in the water. And then sometimes I'll find a fruit, like some kind of a berry. Um, and mix it with some mint. Always flavoring the water, and I have a, a my water jug that I usually um, bring with me, but wow. flavoring your water, I know. <laughs> so this is 32 ounces, and it reminds me that um, this is all that I've drank today, which isn't very much, considering it's already almost one or it's one o'clock. I haven't drank a whole lot today. But this is, this is what I use, just so I know how much I drink. But I always flavor it with lemon, orange, um, but something. But the lemon part has anything to do with your digestion? Not that I have, not that I've heard of. Um, there's no one food that really does help with that di with the digestion. I think it's just the uh, combinations of the food that we eat, um, getting the, the right foods. Certain foods, though, can 
can uh, hinder digestion if, if you're eating uh, too much of it. For example, if you're eating too much fiber and you're not getting enough water, you're mm -hmm. going to have some problems. Um, but there's not really a lot of foods out there that are going to cause problems with your digestion unless you're, you're eating a diet that really is high, in, that's a highly processed type of a diet um, and, and doesn't have a lot of the right nutrients, then you're probably going to have more of a digestion issue. But then again, some people, some people do have um, some things going on where they do have to eat certain foods, like the, the, the fiber ones. So, so that means that I can drink a glass of water during the meal, and it's fine. Yeah, I've never heard anything other... Um, I just read, there's one article that said don't do it because it will slow your digestion. Do you know who it was? You wouldn't have oh, to no, do Oh no, this is a bunch of years. Yeah, and that brings me to something that's really not really related to holiday eating the well, way it is. It's the information that we get on the internet, for yeah. one thing, and the information that we get from well-meaning family and friends that they might not really know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> and on the internet, and on TV, and in newspapers, and in magazines, after the first of the year, we are inundated with advertisements and information about diets and about buy this product and that's going to help your digestion, buy this product that will help you lose weight, this pill, Dr. Oz might be promoting some kind of a weight loss, uh, which drives me crazy, and don't listen to it. Don't listen to that, any of that stuff. Don't spend one penny on any type of a weight loss product. Just eat in a healthy way. And you guys all know what that means. I mean, you, you know that you should be eating whole grains, fruits and vegetables, getting your protein, right? Cutting down on fat, sugar, and salt. Not cutting out. I would never, ever tell anybody to cut out a certain food. I mean, I love apple pie. I love cheesecake. I love pumpkin pie. I love chocolate. But I don't eat it every day. So just think about that. The last thing that I want to talk about as far as food goes is, and I should have brought this today, but take at some point, take a small piece of chocolate, if you like chocolate, which I'm sure most people do, maybe like a Hershey's Kiss or um, maybe a small piece of a Hershey's bar, just a small piece, and, and put it into your mouth and just don't eat it right away. Just let it sit there for a minute and savor that flavor of whatever that food, whatever it might be that you're doing. If you've never done that before, it's amazing how it just, the flavors just kind of burst because typically people will eat something like that very quickly. Let's say it's a, it's a Reese's peanut butter cup, a little miniature Reese's peanut butter cup. What do we do? Throw it back, a couple bites, it's gone. Okay, try to make it last a minute of just really savoring it and chewing it slowly, rolling your tongue over it, getting those flavors. And it's amazing that experience will make you want to eat it just a little bit slower and what it is is you're getting the satisfaction out of that particular food so you're not going to be craving it in another 30 seconds <laughs> so think about if you had four of them sitting on the table eat them four within yeah. a minute <laughs> right that's a and I do one at a time very slowly then you're not going to want any more in fact after you eat two you're pretty much satisfied if you just throw back four, you're going to be looking for more because you haven't gotten satisfaction out of that food. So that, that would be something uh, that I would recommend you doing because you feel that flavor, you get that satisfaction. As Americans, we don't enjoy our food. We don't get pleasure out of food. We're usually in a hurry and we usually do eat very quickly. Okay, now I'm going to talk for just a minute about these jars, but do you guys have any, any uh, comments or questions about some of the things I've talked about already? What about uh, when you buy canola oil? Is that a helpful thing as far as the oil is concerned? or? Yeah, now with oils, the jury's out on oils. There's a lot of controversy about what type of oil should I use. Um, some oils are better for hotter temperatures and some oils are more used for light baking. But the saturated fat level in canola oil is very low. The saturated fat content in olive oil is very low. Uh, coconut oil is one that has, for some reason, gotten a lot of press, a lot of attention lately in the media using coconut oil. I don't know why um, it is high in saturated fat, but one thing that I did read about is they say there may be something in this coconut oil that is beneficial something that it is in one of the enzymes in the saturated fat. Not been proven. I think that we go through these spurts of a favorite food and then we see it's, it's high. Like gluten right now is like down here. Gluten is not a favorite. They're telling you to avoid gluten. 
coconut oil is up here. I don't know why, but I don't recommend it because it's high in saturated fat. So <laughs> canola oil certainly is a good one. There's some other types of oils on the market, and you can just tell by looking at the nutrition label, and it'll say how much saturated fat is in that product. But that is usually one we recommend people to use uh, with baking, and then olive oil with things like salad dressings, and uh, maybe when you're if you're cooking up some uh, something for maybe a, a, a dish, a dinner dish, you can use some olive oil. That's a really good question. Okay, so let me talk for a minute about these jars. So it's always fun during the holidays, and I talk about healthy holiday uh, cooking and and, uh, and baking. And these these make really really great gifts. And this is a um, this is the Palouse soup mix, and this is something that we make in our Sensible Nutrition program, and. Um, what this is, and it has all the ingredients on here, but this is, um, it's lentils and split peas and barley and it's whole wheat macaroni and it's all mixed up. And so what you do, and the instructions are on here, is you take a cup of this mix and then you also put in some, um, some carrots and onions and then different seasonings and you let it simmer for 45 minutes. So it's a really nice gift to give is you, you just mix these grains in, 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 the, in the beans in this jar and then put the tag on it and then give that as a gift. And what a great healthy um, idea making your own making your own soup. I mean it's very, very simple. We do the same thing with um, with uh, cocoa mix. And this is a cocoa mix we make in our program, and it's uh, dry milk powder and cocoa, um, some sugar, um, and then I put a little bit some little chocolate chips in there because, you know, it's okay to have chocolate. And then just stick the little candy cane on there and just give that, give that as, as a gift for somebody that might want to make their own hot cocoa. And what's nice about this cocoa is it's made with dry milk powder. And so the calcium level is really high because it has milk already in it, where the cocoa mix that you buy from the grocery store typically doesn't have any of that um, in it. It mostly has, uh, I think, just cocoa and, and sugar. And then this one, um, it's another fun one. We just put a little cinnamon stick on it just to decorate. Uh, I just was kind of using some things I had laying around the office. But this is a, a, a oatmeal, a cinnamon oatmeal pancake mix, and it's got the oats, it's got brown sugar, uh, white and wheat flour, and then on the top are cinnamon and some other seasonings there. And this is a really good pancake mix. You would think oatmeal in your pancake mix. <laughs> But again, it's just kind of making some additions and substitutions in your recipes. It really does add a lot of nutrition. And so we have oats in here and, and wheat flour. And then, let, let's say I gave this to you as a gift, then you would just take this, dump it in a jar, add these other ingredients, and then it tells you, it tells you what, what to do with it to make the pancakes. So it's just kind of a fun idea um, as a gift, and it also makes things just a little bit, just a little bit healthier. And then this, this is just a. Um, the Palouse soup again is just in a smaller jar because you can do it in a small, it's just little canning jars, mason jars. You can usually get these pretty cheap um, if you go to a, uh, like a thrift store or something like that. Um, so what I wanted to do with these, um, you know, just to make this fun, is if you guys wanted to, as I'm finishing up here, if you're interested in getting one of these, um, put your name on a little piece of paper here and, and we are going to just do our, um, uh, a drawing. <laughs> if you're interested in something like that. So I just kind of want to make fun. So just put your name um, on this little piece of paper. If you want one, if you don't, then you don't have to do anything. Okay. That's what made all those pencils do. And, oh, I walked right in front of the camera, didn't I? That's okay. You're on camera all the time. <laughs> Okay. And so um, I talked about putting the oatmeal in the pancake mix, and I just kind of brought uh, to my attention. Um, well, I talked about pumpkin last time, and I brought the pumpkin uh, cookies, and I do a lot with pumpkin. But something that you can do with something like chili, pancakes, French toast is you can add pumpkin to the batter. So if you have like a chili recipe that you really like that you use during the uh, winter months, add about a, a cup, half cup to a cup of pumpkin to it. It does not affect the flavor at all because you might say, oh, I don't like pumpkin. It creams it up and it really does make for a good chili dish and it also adds a lot of vitamin A, which is what uh, pumpkin is known for. Putting it in French toast and also your pancake mix, it also adds a lot of flavor and it really does uh, add the nutrition too. So just kind of, uh, Changing things up a little bit for the holidays, adding things that have, that have nutrition, taking things out that maybe aren't so good for you, 
watching your portion sizes and by using the smaller plates and just being aware of how much that you're eating is really makes for a, a much more I don't know, happy holiday season. And also, when January 1st rolls around, <laughs> you're not going to feel like you have to do anything drastic in order to make up for the uh, for the, the months of the holidays where, where maybe eating wasn't, wasn't all that pleasant. I'd like to ask about eggs. Ten years ago, uh, uh, we eggs. were restricted to two eggs, eggs. a week. Say it one more time. Eggs. 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 Oh, I'm eggs. sorry. Oh, eggs. Yes. Oh, very like Ten oh, years very ago, question. it was if you had more than two eggs a week, I mean, you were loading up on cholesterol and everything. Right. Now they're promoting eggs again, like you can have them every day. Well, isn't that true though? If you think about butter, uh, for a while there was evil, and, and then all of a sudden, butter's back. Mm -hmm. And I saw it on the cover of Time Magazine, butter's back. <laughs> um, and, and the same thing with eggs, evil. And then now, have an egg. So, um, and it really can add to confusion uh, for us, but eggs, now, eggs are very, very, they're extremely nutritious. There are so many vitamins and minerals, but the downside, of course, is in the yolk, we do have 200 milligrams of cholesterol, uh, which for some people could be a problem. So in baking, what you can do, um, if you do want to cut down your cholesterol, you don't want to use those eggs, you can use the egg white, but what you have to do, if it calls for two eggs, you have to use four mm -hmm. eggs and just do separate the yolk from the egg. Mm -hmm. um, and you're still gonna have the same results in your baking because the yolk doesn't have a, a, as much of a purpose as the uh, the white of the egg. So that's one thing you can do. Mm -hmm. um, if you did just try to use one egg, and I've done that before because I just didn't have any eggs. I had one egg and so I just used one in, in my uh, in the baking and it turned out just, just fine. So, um, but that, that is a good question because there really is a controversy out there. And also using an egg product like the liquid eggs um, because of the, the amount of cholesterol. Um, so I, I don't tell people not to eat eggs, but um, if they have high cholesterol or if they have genetic form of cholesterol where their body's producing too much, that might be something that they would have to do some substitution. So you're kind of suggesting go back to two a week would be just fine. I don't think there's any problem with two a week at all. I don't, I don't see a problem. But like I said, most people, um, most of the cholesterol concerns that our country is facing, it comes from things more like meat, because we overconsume meat, and also um, we see quite a bit of it in, um, um, in some of our, the saturated fat from our dairy products, because saturated fat will turn into cholesterol in the body. So eggs, typically aren't going to be a huge problem for most people, unless you're somebody that um, genetically produce a lot, your body produces a lot of cholesterol. But two eggs a week is not going to be a problem at all. You get a lot more cholesterol than that just eating um, too many animal products, like like the meat. Oh, so you were next. I'm sorry. Let, 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 let first. I may sound stupid, but what are liquid eggs? Are they in a carton like milk? Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. white yes. are. Because have you guys, no, you guys used that? I've never seen them either. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't even know exactly what, I think that, do you know what, I don't even know what they're made of, but there's no cholesterol. Yeah, it's in a carton. Oh, yeah, it's in a carton. It's and then, a lot of times it's used for baking and there's no cholesterol in them, but I really, I really couldn't tell you exactly. So it's not a dumb question because I don't know either uh, what exactly they're made of, but it's an egg substitute. Well, it, restaurants right, serve uh, in scram, if you ask for scrambled eggs, they're using the liquid ones. Okay. So if you want a real egg, you have to ask for it over medium oh. or over hard yeah. or up. Or. And they're really, some people don't even, can't even tell the difference between them, except for they look really, really yellow. Yeah. I mean, yes. it's just like bright yellow. Yeah. <laughs> it's the color. And, well, they have a little color in them, too, some of them. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. you kind of, yeah. It's, but it, but it, it's, it's a healthier choice for those that really do need to watch their, their cholesterol level. But is the white beneficial to you, or is it the yolk that's so good for you? The white, the white has, yeah, it has a lot of the protein and the vitamins and minerals. Oh, um, the yolk has uh, the cholesterol and the fat. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's typically the white that's going to be healthier oh, for you. Sorry. And and the oh, egg white can be used exactly. just fine with things like omelets and, uh, and you know some people I'm might like she was saying about the two I eggs. Some people might use one egg and then part. use an egg white. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you don't yeah. have to use the two yeah. eggs. I mean, that question she had was really good. But in recipes, they haven't changed that at all. But you can use. Like, yeah, or if you want to use an egg, and then two egg whites. Just use one egg yolk. But you don't but have the yolk really doesn't have to the others. Okay. In the recipe. Well, here's an answer well, to your question. Yeah. He, has, he has tried the liquid eggs. 
of have eaten it. it. It don't have the yolk in it. Just it the has the white. the other part. Yeah, the white of it, and then I guess they add the color to make it look more because yeah. the egg white doesn't actually have yeah. any yeah. of that color. They're not very tasty. She said, then you have to add bacon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hollandaise sauce. Bacon yeah. 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 Well, thank you. No, I'm not on the don't okay. feel. Thank you for this. This is that, that table. Okay. <laughs> Barbara and I and Betty and Karen and Bunny. Okay, we all sit at the same table. Well, and Karen's a visitor. We've been having this raging debate over that cappuccino machine. Uh, cappuccino machine where? The cappuccino machine here. At oh, the oh, here, okay. How many calories are like in a big 16 ounce cup of cappuccino you buy? <laughs> Starbucks or, you know, <laughs> Mini Mart or something like that. No. Yeah. Maybe. So um, coffee has changed over the years, um, and, and something like Starbucks, you're gonna that it varies a lot. So if you if you go to a coffee shop or order a coffee, um, it's the milk is usually whole unless you ask for um, now the automatic machines. I don't know what those are, but if you go to like a Starbucks for example, yeah. the milk is typically whole, and they typically will put uh, the whipped cream on the top if it's like one of those foo foo drinks. Um, so you just have to ask for the uh, for the low fat version or not fat version and they can make it using one percent or skim milk well i don't know how, how much you want to add it but starbucks publishes it of course it's 150 calories for a 16 ounce cup the part the next so the what does that mean in plain english what, in the, what is 150 calories as far as what you should be drinking or eating? okay okay um well that that's a good question too but our liquid calories count just like our solid calories do. Yeah. So if you had, a, let's say a 300 calorie Starbucks, let's well, say a 400 calorie. Yeah, with all the toppings, yeah. Yeah, let's okay. say four, okay, with all the toppings. Let's say 400, <coughs> j just so we can get an idea of calories. Right. Um, we typically need about um, 1,800, let's say, depending on your activity level. Okay, so let, let's say that you're very active, you're male. Okay, so you, let's say you might need more like 2,400 where somebody like a small female that's not very active might only need about 1,600. So let's talk, let's talk about a 1,600. Well, if her drink is 400, <laughs> if she needs 1,600 in the entire day, that's 25%. She's done. In one cup. In one cup. So if you look at it like that, because 1,600 is not, you know, it's not unusual. Some of you might already know about what your calorie level is, and 1,600 is pretty typical for a senior that's not real active. So, yeah, that's not good. That's not good. Stay at the I, Starbucks. I got friends that have their Starbucks in the morning. They, drink, they go to lunch break, get Starbucks. On the way home, they get their Starbucks. <coughs> Right. So, I mean, my, you know, so financially, what are they doing yeah, financially that right there is a huge problem because we're talking five bucks a pop. Even if you have ten dollars a day for yeah. every day is three hundred dollars a month. They do it so though. That's I, mean, a I guess that's all they can do. They'd be better off to do booze. They go. What are there people who are devoted to Starbucks? So, so with, with, with me, yeah, and drink calories count just the same. I mean, people sometimes don't think that, but then again, a sixteen ounce soda pop or a twenty ounce bottle of soda is going to be 300 calories so you have to think about the amount of calories that are in our drinks because it is usually sugar and it's fat when we're talking about Starbucks or a coffee drink so you just have to number one is it worth it 400 calories that's 25 percent of my total intake or uh, maybe I can get a lighter version is is another way to, to do that but there are some days where I just order it and I don't even care because it's just been one of those days which is fine <laughs> they have coffees that are flavored that from the grounds and honestly it tastes just as good and I, I drink that every day one cup right. and one no cup. Wow. well I don't really need much more <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you, I don't put anything in it and you, you get the same satisfaction but you I have agree. to brew it yourself of course I agree but uh, it's got the flavor it tastes good and so and, and so we all have our favorites and we all have our favorites that might not be really good for us and so it's really just kind of making those choices Moderation. yeah yeah exactly I mean there, there's some things I am not gonna budge on and I am gonna eat it I care what you say and then there's other things that I know okay so <laughs> this is 25% of my daily intake what can I do later on in the day so that I'm not you know eating 3,000 calories in that day which during the holidays is not unusual for us to take in 3,000 calories. Not unusual at all. And if we're doing that every other day, by January 1st, yeah, we're going to be, we're
We're gonna, our parents, oh, right? Do so, you guys have holiday clothes? <laughs> 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 like, I got some spandex. Holiday sweatpants. Yeah, holiday sweatpants. It happens, and it's nice. And it's, it is a lot of fun, but it's not always it. It's not as pretty. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, just to make this fun, is I'll draw a name out, and let's say if I draw your name, who's ever name, just pick whatever one you want. Okay, that probably sounds pretty fair. Just, and if you don't want it, or I mean, you can give it to a friend or a grandchild or whoever you want to give it to. Um, Jim, Kirchin, <laughs> what is it? I don't know. What do you want it? Is it passing? Okay, Barb Huffman. Okay. Jim is on. All right, thanks. All right, bye. <laughs> I remember you from that. I, I did a couple of presentations last year. I remember you from that one. Okay, and then Jack. Oh, is that you, Jack Damien? Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. You took mine. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a big one, though. That's the same thing. Noreen? Oh, that's Noreen. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 We have the hot cocoa, and then we have the... Um, there's no recipes for all of these. Linda Hansen? Yay, Noreen. I would have chosen that one. Come have some hot chocolate with me. That's the temper I like. Um, okay, so I have, um, if you guys were interested in making it, any of these, this is the oatmeal pancake. Um, cinnamon oatmeal pancake mix. So this is how we layer it in the, not in there, whoever had that one. That's how we layer it is in this order. Um, you have to smash each layer down pretty, you know, or just kind of push it down if you've got something. And then what I have on the back here is these are the things that you attach to the um, to the actual jar so you know what to add, like the eggs and, and, and the um, vegetable oil and the water to make the pancakes. And then the other one that I have here, uh, is the Palou soup mix. <coughs> if you wanted to uh, to put that into a jar, um, these are the ingredients, and then these are the seasonings you add when you actually make the soup. So if you guys were interested in any of those, you can certainly take those with you. And then the last thing that I have, we talked a little bit about food safety and about turkey and buying the turkey. Um, the university comes out with these turkey talks every year um, because we know there's questions about food safety during the holidays. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is there's also recipes on what to do with your leftovers, your turkey and your mashed potatoes and all that. Uh, there's some recipes that you can make and then just some really good recommendations and some temperatures, uh, things to keep your food safe during the holidays. We <coughs> do eat a lot during the holidays and we certainly do want to keep it keep it safe. Um, and so yeah, so I have this here. <laughs> you ready? The recipe for the muffins. Oh, and the recipe for the muffins. I mean, if you guys just, I don't have any napkins. Oh, there's napkins up there. If you want to take a muffin, please do. And then there's recipes. Okay. okay. Do you guys have any other questions? You have some really good ones. Any other ones? If you if you do, uh, please don't hesitate to uh, to contact me over at the extension office. And the phone number is on probably pretty much all of these handouts right here. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.